I think this is it. Dear Tim and Moby, I know that the Twin Towers fell on 9-11, but why would someone do that? From Tiffany. Hmm. This is a tough one. Maybe we should go over what happened first. The morning of September 11, 2001, started off as your average Tuesday. People went to work, kids went to school, and everyone pretty much went about their business as usual. At 8.46 a.m., though, everything changed. At that moment, an airplane full of passengers flew into one of the Twin Towers. Those were the two tallest structures of the World Trade Center in downtown New York City. All the people on the plane were killed, and so were many people in the building. I know. Then, about 20 minutes later, a second plane flew into the other tower. It was then that people started to realize that this was no accident. It was an attack. It was clear that the planes had been hijacked or forcefully taken over. Shortly after that, there was another plane crash, but this time it was at the Pentagon, right outside Washington, D.C. The Pentagon is the headquarters of the U.S. Department of Defense. Next, the unthinkable happened. Back in New York, the South Tower of the World Trade Center collapsed. It was a devastating blow. Debris flew everywhere, and all of downtown Manhattan was covered in a cloud of dust and smoke. Fortunately, most people were able to get out of the tower before it fell. But many others, including firefighters and police officers who had gone in to help, were trapped and killed. Well, the building had actually been designed to handle small crashes, but nothing like this. The fuel from the airplane ignited an enormous fire that destroyed the skyscraper's internal structure. It was the same problem at the North Tower, and at 10.28 a.m., it too collapsed. Hundreds of people lost their lives in an instant. Around the time of the South Tower's collapse, another plane crashed in an empty field in Shanksville, Pennsylvania. This fourth hijacked plane was most likely intended to hit another building, but evidence suggests that passengers took the airplane over from the hijackers, causing it to crash. There were no survivors. Yeah, all told, 3,000 civilians lost their lives that day. It was the worst attack on U.S. soil since the bombing of Pearl Harbor in Hawaii in 1941. Right, so let's talk a little bit about why all this happened. Hijacking a plane is a form of terrorism. That's an act of violence designed to spread fear in others and attract attention to a political cause. The September 11th attacks were carried out by 19 members of a terrorist network called Al-Qaeda. It wants to rid the Muslim world of Western ideas, especially anything from the United States. 9-11 was meant to scare the U.S. into withdrawing support for certain governments in the Middle East. Al-Qaeda would promote revolutions in these nations, then set up religious governments friendly to their organization. And that brings us to Al-Qaeda's larger goal to hijack Islam itself. They would like the world to believe that they're acting on the religion's behalf, which is ridiculous when you think about it, like, at all. Islam is a major world religion made up of nearly two billion people. It's not represented by a criminal organization. Good question. You might have heard that a guy named Osama bin Laden was responsible for the events on 9-11. Osama bin Laden was the head of the Al-Qaeda network. He didn't personally take part in the attacks, but as Al-Qaeda's leader, bin Laden helped plan and carry the whole thing out. Well, the United States responded to 9-11 by invading Afghanistan, a country that was harboring Al-Qaeda members. Much of Al-Qaeda's organization was destroyed, and certain key leaders were killed. After nearly a decade in hiding, Osama bin Laden was eventually found and killed by the U.S. government. But even as Al-Qaeda has been weakened, other terrorist groups have sprung up in their place. Back home, it's been hard to rebuild. Many lives were shattered in the aftermath of the September 11th attacks, but families, friends, and complete strangers pulled together to help out relatives and friends of the victims, both on the day of the attacks and in the weeks and months that followed. 
Within a year, all physical damage to the Pentagon was repaired. It's been a much tougher rebuilding process here in New York, but things are looking up. By 2012, the new World Trade Center became the tallest building in New York. I couldn't agree more.